How did Saul die according to 1 Samuel 31? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we conclude our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of 1 Samuel on walking through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing 1 Samuel chapter 31, verses 1 to 13. But before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, turn to 1 Samuel 31, verse 1. But if you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So 1 Samuel chapter 31, beginning at verse 1. Now the Philistines fought against Israel... And the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines, and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. Then the Philistines followed hard after Saul and his sons. And the Philistines killed Jonathan, Abinadab, and, Mal and Malchishua, Saul's sons. The battle became fierce against Saul. The archers hit him, and he was severely wounded by the archers. Then Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised men come and thrust me through and abuse me. And his armor-bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell on it. And when his armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell on his sword and died with him. So Saul, his three sons, his armor-bearer, and all his men died together that same day. And when the men of Israel, who were on the other side of the valley, and those who were on the other side of the Jordan, saw that the men of Israel had fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook the cities and fled. And the Philistines came and dwelt in them. So it happened the next day, when the Philistines came to strip the slain, that they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. And they cut off his head and stripped off his armor, and sent word throughout the land of the Philistines to proclaim it in the temple of their idols and among the people. Then they put his armor in the temple of the Ashtoreths, they fat, and they fastened his body to the wall of Bethshan. Now when the inhabitants of Jabeth Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose and traveled all night, and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Bethshan. And they came to Jabesh and burned them there. Then they took their bones and buried them under the tamarisk tree at Jabesh, and fasted seven days." The battle between the Philistines and Israel up in the Jezreel Valley was first introduced to us back in chapter 28. Chapter 28 largely dealt with Saul's visit to the witch at Endor, where Samuel's spirit told him that he and his sons would die the next day in the battle. Chapter 29 gave us the events before chapter 28 and the Philistines' march up to Jezreel, where David and his men were sent away from the army because many of the Philistine commanders didn't trust that David wouldn't betray them. Chapter 30 dealt with the concurrent events between David and the Amalekites. Coming now to chapter 31, we finally get the battle. The battle didn't go Israel's way, just as Samuel had told Saul back in chapter 28. Saul was obviously being judged by the Lord for his sins, with now being the time for David to take the throne. Thus, Israel thoroughly lost this battle. Much of Israel's army fled before the Philistines, and Saul's three sons that went to battle, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Melchishua, were all killed. Back in 1 Samuel 14.49, we saw that Saul's sons were named Jonathan, Jishui, and Melchishua. The first Chronicles is going to make it clear that Abinadab and Jishui were, the, were different names for the same person, much like many people today have two given names and can be called by either of them. Now we're going to find in 2 Samuel that Saul had a fourth son, Ishbosheth, that wasn't in battle. We don't know the reason for this, but Ishbosheth is going to survive this battle and rival David in Israel at the beginning of 2 Samuel. Which brings us to the reason that that this battle that this battle of judgment from the Lord had Saul's sons being killed. Which is God wanted to show Israel that Saul's line wasn't the royal line any longer. It would be David's. Now you might think that Jonathan was righteous and didn't deserve to die, and while we can see Jonathan's righteousness and faithfulness throughout the latter half of this book, everyone righteous or wicked will one day die. By dying as a man of faith, Jonathan lost nothing in terms of eternity. Sure, he might have liked to be in the court of King David, but perhaps the Lord knew something we didn't. Perhaps the Lord knew that not being king would be difficult on Jonathan. Or perhaps God knew the heart of Israel 
and thus as long as Jonathan lived, David's throne would not be secure for David or his descendants. Whatever was the case, in this case, it was the Lord's will that Jonathan die. And so that's what happened, along with Saul's other sons, save Ishbosheth. The battle was so fierce against Saul that the archers hit him and he was severely wounded. Now there is some debate as to whether the archers severely injured Saul physically or that by hitting him, Saul was overtaken in fear, for the word translated as wounded could mean either of those things. But in the end, it really doesn't matter. Saul knew that he wanted his life to end then, rather than being taken captive by the Philistines and perhaps treated like Samson in the book of Judges. And so, wanting to die, Saul asked his armor bearer to kill him, something that his armor bearer wouldn't do out of fear, for this man was in charge of the king's life. What would happen to him had it been found out that he killed the king, even at the king's orders? Not wanting to be captured, Saul thus fell on his sword and died. And when his armor bearer saw that, the armor bearer did likewise. Thus Saul committed suicide in the end, rather than being captured or killed by the Philistines. Suicide, or the taking of one's own life, is self-murder. And it's never justified in Scripture. Now, yes, there are some people who are not in their right minds, either through drugs or disease, who end up taking their lives and are not held responsible for that action because sin requires a capacity to knowingly break God's law. But that is not the condition of Saul here. Saul is afraid, but he knows what he was doing. Just like it was after the battle with the Amalekites, Saul doesn't want to be dishonored, even though Saul being in that situation in the first place was because he dishonored God by disobeying God. So while it might be easy to have pity on Saul, let's remember, it was Saul's fault that the Philistines were winning it all. Had Saul been a faithful king, God would have been with him and established his kingdom after him. But sin led Saul away from God and ultimately led to his suicide here at Mount Gilboa in the Jezreel Valley. But even though Saul killed himself in order to avoid being dishonored, the Philistines found his body and dishonored it anyway, by cutting off his head, stripping, it of, uh, stripping his body of his armor, much like what happened to Goliath, and hanging it on the wall of Bethshan, a city situated where the Herod Valley and the Jordan Valley meet, just west of the Jordan River. As for Israel, when they saw that their soldiers had fled and that Saul and his three sons had died, they fled, allowing the Philistines to come and occupy the territory, at least temporarily. Now it is likely from what we read here and in 2 Samuel that the land that the Philistines occupied was that land north of the Jezreel Valley. How far north, we don't know. And the land just east of the Jordan River, near the Sea of Chenereth, the Sea of Galilee. And that would mean the land of Ephraim southward remained out of Philistine control, including the land of Judah. As for Saul's body, which was hung at Bethshan, the men of Jabesh Gilead heard what had happened and so traveled the relatively short distance to fetch the body and bring it back to their city to burn it, in order that Saul's body not be desecrated further by the Philistines. If you recall from chapter 11, it was Saul who saved the men of Jabesh Gilead from the Ammonites, his first real act as king. So the bond between this people and Saul was tight. That they honored Saul, God's anointed, in this way, and the seven-day fast that followed was one last act of gratitude for what Saul had done for them those many years earlier. And so with that, we conclude our verse-by-verse study of the book of 1 Samuel. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's overall review of what was revealed to us in this book as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.